Welcome to episode 16 of the Sports Lounge on Elevated TV. My name is Bam Jirja and I'm your host as always. And it feels really good to be back doing what I love doing the most, giving you the odd sporting gist that happened over the week and the weekend. And as usual, I'm not here alone. I'm here with an amazing, brilliant set of people on my crew today. Let's meet them, shall we? First of all is Adit Tayo Adishola, our guest of the day. Tayo is a renowned sportsman. He loves football, even um, local football as well. But he's a Liverpool fan. He follows Liverpool closely. Tayo, how is it that you became a Liverpool fan? I've known you for quite a while now. I know your dad is a United fan. Your brother is a United fan. Most of your friends, I'm your friend, I'm a United fan. <laughs> how did you end up being a Liverpool fan? I guess um, it was from Michael Owen. But I was first a Real Madrid fan because of Zidane. But then I took 2002 World Cup. I really liked Owen. And so then, when when the 2001 run up also, that was also something that was exciting. And Owen was probably like a transgenerational talent at the time. He was so young, scored so many goals. And I don't even think there are so many strikers that have come, that have reached his ability. And so that's why I liked um, Liverpool. Then also because of um, Steven Gerrard also. Oh, Captain Fantastic. Yes, yeah, probably my best player ever, <laughs> <Well done>. actually. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to have you on the lounge. Thank you. Move it to the man with the numbers, the man that can get you any number you want. Just call him, eat him up on all these lines. He'll get you the number that you need. It's Precious Amos, we are our professor. Precious, how are you doing today? <laughs> well, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> then finally, the big fish himself. I missed you slightly last week when I said, nah, I need to have you back. <laughs> I need to have you back on here. It's nice to have you. Ah, uh, thank you. They say you supply numbers. Yes. <laughs> uh, the way the economy is doing now. Yes. I've not done it before, but I want to start playing Baba Ejebo. <laughs> Anyway, now multiple streams of income. This economy. Because this Buhari economy, you must <laughs> diversify. Help me with numbers. Help, help my ministry. See, this company is, is taking <laughs> venture. Like Jesus, venture has left me. Help your boy, well, now, bro. There's, help your boy. there's one, uh, I don't know if you guys saw one particular video, a pastor that comes into the... Um, like with, a, like, like a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he will be the best person to supply the numbers you need. No, no, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I don't like pastors. <laughs> Especially Nigerian pastors. They are all scammers in my mind. So if I ask them to give me a number now, it's, if somebody won lottery in America, the pastor was suing the person for not paying 10%. So I, I don't want to have anything to do with pastors. I know that a lot of my pastor's friends that will watch this video, Shabo, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, it's nice to have you all here. Thank I'm you. sure you had a great weekend, but guess who's, who you did not have a better weekend than? Can you get, make a guess? Betting companies. You did not have Betting a better Betting companies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, did you see my tweet on, on that? Like, yeah, I saw man, it. Barcelona saw lost, it. Paris and Germain started weekend. You know, I wanted to predict this weekend. Mm -hmm. I told producers, uh, oh, I want to do a top 10. Once Paris and Germain lost, I just told to want Mumu thing that they called the job, I believe they called it. I just know in my head, I was like, oh, this is the weekend where the babalawos of uh, bet companies will work. I just stayed away. It was a really weird weekend, but let's go into it. Let's go into analysis. I'm going to start with you. And um, as much as you hate United, you must admit that they had a little bit of a revival, winning three away games on the Spain. But it's back down to it against Bournemouth. What happened in that game for United? Well, against Bournemouth, it was back to usual. The against Those three away games actually were just, I feel like, they were more circumstantial than anything. They were just paper over cracks, generally for me, because Manu is, is that team is actually so dysfunctional. No bias, actually. <laughs> not take, not taken. <laughs> because only to me, it doesn't have the quality. If he wasn't a United legend, he won't be. He won't, he won't be coaching any team in the Premier League. Sure, actually. that's true. And so yeah. he doesn't. To me, doesn't have the quality and. You can't tell me that Mani doesn't have better players than Bournemouth, for example. And so why shouldn't they be winning that game? And so it was, Bournemouth came up with more intensity. They had more of a game plan. Mani can't create chances in open play. The wins you had against Chelsea, set piece. Or mostly so, counter-attacking football. Yeah. So Mani can only play transition, basically. Any other thing is clueless. They can't build chances, especially because you don't even have um, Pogba fit, who was basically With your... The best his, chance creator in, exactly. in that team. And so... Man, it's going to be a hard season for my United. I don't know what, you, what kind of business you do January because even January is hard to get really quality, quality players. players. And you don't even have a director of football who can, you know, how will I put it, create, um, find the best deals for the best players. And so, I don't know. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's quite it's, it's, it's sad and alarming that United needed a goal. And guess who they had to bring on? Lingard, somebody that not scored a goal or giving an assist in the whole of 2019. It's, it was it's, quite... You're, you're even United, I'm, going for, I'm looking at that position. I'm going for Bruno Fernandes. I'm going all out for Bruno Fernandes in general. Well, you had a chance to buy him summer and you said it, maybe he gives away the ball too much. No, I don't think that was the reason. I think I so. had one story about Bruno Fernandez that they should sue Manchester United for that. This is what I heard. I, I don't know if it is true. They said that his father is obese. So he has the propensity Can to also be, be fat. Be <laughs> and fat. that was why... You know, that was why <laughs> Manchester United... <laughs> Now, I don't know how true that is, but I saw it somewhere and I was like, okay. Now, United situation is coming But because out. I'm coming from a football side and I've heard in the back room, I've heard some weird reason why players are not signed. So Yeah, it's, it's, it's true because even Liverpool wanted to buy fair kids. They said some injury, had, he has denied it also. But I don't know what, what is reminding you, and maybe back to what you said about body shaming players. Same okay. thing they did for Lukaku. Too. Lukaku is probably one of the fittest players. Two hundred and twenty goals plus in his young career, but they say he had poor first touch. See, I would rather have a four poor first touch and have that number of goals than have the excellent touch of combine combination of. Rashford, it should be a traffic warning. <laughs> Sir, road word, traffic warning, and 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 Rashford. But let's just let's just talk about Marshall. Sorry, before okay. we move. Marshall is so inconsistent, and he has so much promise, but it's so terrible how he has no declined. To... Yeah, yeah, because he's not. He he doesn't even care. I don't know. He doesn't. He doesn't show signs. He doesn't run. He doesn't close down. He walks half of the time. That game that he played, if he played the whole 90 minutes. I'm sure they didn't take him off because they didn't even have any body to replace him with. So his mind is in a terrible place. It's all doom ah. and gloom for United, it seems. But let's where there's no doom and gloom and there's a bit of happiness is um, in the Blues. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask, what is it about Sammy Abraham and playing away? Out of his nine goals in the Premier League this season, he scored seven away. If yeah. I'm correct. So what is it about that away day glory? Well, I think teams in the Premier League tend to play more, ex a bit more expansive when they are at home. And playing at Stanford Bridge, the um, formation teams set out to be a little bit more compact. So Tammy is the kind of player who thrives in, on, on space. So away from home, he gets the luxury of uh, that, that space that he needs to play in. Look at the first goal he scored over the weekend. That That's has been from Jorginho, by the way. Jorginho has been doing Brian this. <laughs> he has been doing this, like, even the season before this, he was also making passes like that. But the strikers were just not picking those passes up. That was why um, he ended up without any assist yeah. last season in the Premier League. Not because of any fault of his, but because of the less than intelligent brains in the line for Chelsea. Lampard said they had rehearsed that move in training. So it wasn't a mistake. Before we move on from Chelsea, there's this little talk of Chelsea trying to break into Man City Liverpool. Is that possible? Uh, it's not going to happen. You don't think so. Chelsea will be winning the Champions League, not the Premier League. <laughs> 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 uh, let's quickly go to North London and then um, with Edafe. Edafe is 10 games now okay, and it seems Unai does not know his best thing. Arsenal is... How many games have Arsenal lost again? <laughs> <laughs> They've lost... Um, Just one game in the Premier League? It's just one. It's Liverpool. Just, they lost to Liverpool. And that's it. That's all. Really? But no. It seems so bad. Okay, but but, but I you? was just trying to to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal have reached the place now. I said this before when they said the likely lineup were Thierry Henry, Ateta, and Una Emery. And I, 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 I remember tweeting and I said the way I understand success in football is don't divorce a woman and marry a friend or somebody that look like her. Because chances are that that person that is a friend or that looks like her will come with the same attributes why you divorce her. Asana sacked Asen Wenger and employed a low budget Asen Wenger. Oh, wow. So all of the <laughs> things that Asen Wenger used to do is still the same thing. There's nothing that has changed in terms of the spine of the team is still weak. Asen Wenger, last 10 years or last 12 years, Arsenal had problem with substitution. He would spend more time fondling and fingering his uh, zipper of his jacket <laughs> than really reading the game and making the right substitution. Asen Wenger would wait for the 70, 50 minutes to make substitution. Uh, the game that Arsenal played over the weekend, 
that's a game that they could easily have won. But that's the same thing that happened in the season Eduardo got injured, where Arsenal lost the title by four points. And remember, the games that cost Arsenal that title was the game against Birmingham, where they draw 2-2, the game against Aston Villa, Middlesbrough, and I think one other game where they drew. They, if, if they had won just two of those games, Manchester United wouldn't have won the game. And it was because of poor substitution where Asamega will be bringing in Ashavin that is not interested or bringing in, uh, what's it called, uh, Nicolas Brentner that is not interested in the game and just goes and destroys the game when Arsenal should be killing off games. In, in that game, I don't understand how uh, you have a beast, a fighter, in um, Torreira, you take him off the midfield where Danny Sabayos is not playing. I don't get why he does that. I really don't get that. Vito, you remove the Sabayos. You are trying to make him good so that Real Madrid would play him next season. People, all of those people say, in Warrior, this is what we see. All that people will talk say, Zidane not like Sabayos. Now I make an reply, they are father. <laughs> so so le let me say it the way it is. You, you don't take him out. You take out your strongest man who's breaking play and also pushing play forward, helping the rest of the team to play. And then you bring in Saka. Obviously, Saka, the guy, the Saka that potted that, that's in Nigerian Nollywood would have done better. <laughs> okay, Saka would have done better in that game. At least would have used his maturity. I'm not blaming Saka. I love uh, Martinelli. He's a young kid who's coming in. He's a, he's a bit of a <laughs> but, but in that game, uh, the man who was the bridge, who was, you know, linking everybody up, was Lacazette. Like I said, was making Aubameyang good, was making Ozzy fantastic, was also helping Danny Ceballos. You took him out in the 56th minute. I don't understand what the horror is. And he brought in Gabriel Martinelli. Yes, he's been scoring a lot of goals, but in lesser competition. This is the EPA. Couldn't you have just waited? To, let's say the game run out of the 70th minute. And then you start making this your changes. Maybe we would have gotten a second goal. But then he did that. And I remember tweeting that. The lineup is good, everything is fine, but if the demon, the diabolical demon that makes him to make that stupid substitution comes up, Arsenal will draw that game, and that's exactly what happened. It's quite a pity, um, because it's even happened again in the Carabao Cup against Liverpool. But we'll, let's end um, this first segment at Liverpool. But before we talk about it, there's a very happy Liverpool fan that I would like you to meet. His name is Damian. Damian, how are you doing? Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Damian Adonkumo. I hope you're having a great time. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say thank you, Liberty TV, for having me. And I'm a Liverpool fan, as you can see. I actually just came back uh, from downtown, you know, off the Liverpool Aston Villa game. And mentality giants, always. Like, I mean, that's what Klopp has done to Liverpool now. Like, we we know how to, like, grind out wins, you know. I'll talk about that later. Uh, anyway, um, Origi, Divock Origi. He's one of the players, one of the few players who, who have um, actually. Uh, rejuvenated their um, their club career like uh, they like like Origi um, he 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 was signed 20 uh, 14 15 season and uh, from Leo and we loaned him back right and he was literally he was actually um, in the worst 11 of uh, Ligon like that season and I mean not many people would think this guy's going to make it back in Liverpool. Like so, when he came back, um, Klopp actually gave him a chance. Um, he was still like you know trying to like um, make it, and now, right now, like I'm saying it, but right now he's an iconic player for Liverpool. He's going to be down in history forever, you know, because of his big goals. Um, my favorite Origi goal is, and you would think it's Barcelona, you know, uh, the the win the winner for. Um, the winner against Barcelona. But no, my favorite Origi goal is um, against Everton last season when the ball, when Pickford prevented the ball from going over uh, and it hit the post and he just headed it back in. That's my favorite Origi goal. And yeah, he's now he's clutch. Like he just comes through. Liverpool fans adore him now. Um, he doesn't have to like drop tw 25 goals a season. You know, we're just, he has done enough. Like he has earned the respect. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to talk about, second and last I'm going to talk about, is um, Liverpool and the title. So, I think this is Liverpool's best chance of winning the league. I mean, last season was actually the best, uh, the best chance, but um, Pep, I don't know, that must team is the greatest Premier League team I've, I've ever seen, ever, ever seen. Um, but this season, if we don't win it this season, I don't think we're going to win it anytime soon because 
what Liverpool, what Klopp has done to um, Liverpool, he's he's brought, he's brought this mentality. Um, it's like Ferguson, uh, Ferguson uh, with United. You know, they didn't have to win um, for nothing. Like they didn't have to like destroy teams. They would grind out wins whenever um, things weren't going their way. You know, like um, like Fergie time, score late winners. Um, Jurgen, Jurgen time, basically. That's what we do now. I think um, Liverpool, Liverpool, they've scored uh, the most. The most um, ten um, dying minute goals since last season um, by Mal. So Klopp has done this thing to Liverpool where the players believe in themselves and they're like, yeah, we can do this, we can win. So I think this is Liverpool's best chance. And the way we can do this is if we avoid key injuries, like injuries to um, Van Dijk for sure, um, Fabinho, very underrated, Fabinho, and Firmino. So if these three can avoid serious injuries, I think Liverpool have a good chance because I know Salah and Mane are important, but those three I just mentioned are just really, they're really key to Liverpool. So I think that's that's the way for Liverpool now. Like just keep winning, you know, just don't lose, just keep winning, and yeah, that's 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 my take. That's what I think, and yeah, thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, have a great day. Thank you so much, Damian. So guys, like I was saying, what I actually wanted to bring up from the Carabao Cup display is one man, Divock Origi. Origi seems to always come up whenever Liverpool needs him, making him, you say, the ultimate professional. We've seen it in Chicharito before. Um, I think 2012, 2013, he came on, scored so many late goals for United, late and important goals. So I'm going to throw a question to the lounge here. Is Origi right, like the best impact sub we have right now in world football? Ty, what do you think? Well, probably in, in, the, in the EPL and probably in European leagues, yeah, major European leagues, is the most notable impact sub. And he's basically a cult hero for Liverpool based on what he did for, you know, um, in the Champions League semi-final. He was, he was always, he's, a, he's a good backup. He probably might not be a top four striker for any of the, those top, top four teams, but he's, 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 a, he's a very solid player. Precious, do, do, you think, do, you, do you have this belief that there are some players that are meant to be backups? Yeah, um, and I want to travel down memory lane a bit. The current coach of Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He also yeah. was, an, <laughs> was an impact player. He's a renowned impact sub. Even though um, Solskjaer is renowned for substitute goals, he is not the best in terms of um, numbers in the Premier League. Yemen okay. Defoe okay. scored 24 goals as a sub. He's the all-time leading scorer in terms of um, yeah, so substitute oh, appearance. Yeah. He's followed by Olivier Giroud. Olivier Giroud scored 20. Now, the interesting thing about that of Giroud is that among the top 10, Giroud has the best goals per minute ratio, about 78 minutes, 78 point something year to a goal in, uh, as a sub. That's fantastic. And then I, uh, Chicharito and Socia are tied with 17 goals each, making them the third, the joint third. Yeah, in on the list. So talking about Origi now, your your substitute bench uh, also contribute a lot to your winning. Success. Yeah, there could be the difference between success and failure. Origi has scored before this season about nine goals coming on as a sub. Out of those nine goals, just one of them was scored before the. 68 minute mark that was against Stoke City mm. yeah I think it was in 2015 or there yeah. just one goal out of nine he has mm. gone on to score about three goals uh, three goals plus or thereabouts after 90 minutes so it tells you that maybe he's not meant to be that leading marksman he could be better off as an impact sub so yeah for me currently one of the best um, I don't want to. I want to watch him till the end of the season to see how consistent he's yeah. going to be. Yeah. But then at the moment, I think he reminds me a lot about Javier Hernandez. Edafe, yeah, um, it's not just about the goals he scores. When he comes on, it feels like Liverpool are going to do something. You've played football before. Have you ever been in that situation, <laughs> or do you know someone who's been in that situation? And just run us through what the person will be feeling. Do you feel sad that you know that you're not one of the top guys? And you just have to be coming in to actually do the job when the team is in trouble. How, how, how would that feel? I spent my first season in Sharks as a sub uh, because they used to call me Smalley. Worry about Joe Smalley. Yeah, because I was very small. I didn't like it. I, mean, I, I felt like 
football it, football that hard that's how i felt like is it that hard but then it was because i've not really come to the life of a professional and then later i realized that no matter what i do they will not likely pick me as a first choice so i conditioned my mind to get in the groove but when i went to sweden it changed i went and the coach signed me four days after i signed the coach moved to denmark that's the worst thing that ever happened to anybody. And then, <laughs> it has to be. Then a new coach came in and brought four players for my position. <laughs> for my position. Four players for my position. And then the coach is a racist. He doesn't like black people. First, if he, got, he got rid of like all the other black boys in the team and I was the only black person in the dressing room. And the coach made it known to me that hmm, yeah, you'll go back parents. to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so first five games, I didn't play. They changed me into like nine. They, they, they will show the board. Three minutes added. The coach would change me in 92 minutes. When the, the, the scoreboard is showing 92.35, he would say, my go. Before I even like, try to <laughs> enter, they don't sound this way. But then, you know, something happened, like a domino, like all the players got injured in training. All of them, the injured, I, I wasn't there. You know, so some of I say I have, it was African voodoo. Mm -hmm. But then I came in, my first game, I scored a hard trick. Second game, I scored two goals. And those two games, the club president was there to watch. It was difficult. From there, I just picked on, and then we played that season and gained promotion. So it was the first time the club was getting promotion. I, I was voted player of the season. Wow. Pre-season, I got injured, which destroyed my knee. But I think it takes a very strong mental mindset to be able to stay focused as the game is going on. You're not part of it. And the kind of players that are playing in the position you're supposed to come in are the leading light of the team. These are not players that coaches substitute. These are players that coaches, you know, you see them in training in the club as that the coach is even afraid of them. And then you are there to keep focused, to stay in the game. Because what you do on the bench is to always study the position you're going to play, the, the player that is marking and how you are with them. But for an Origi to be able to stay focused and stay in the game and still be able to come in and make impact, I mean, I don't matter for him. It's very, very strong. Can I say something quickly about Origi? Um, you know, Jekyll too, at a time when he was at Man City, was also called an impact. Yeah, yeah. he was. He's in the, he's in yeah, the top yeah, ten. Yeah, exactly. And he went to Rome. And he's the star man there. Exactly. So I just, I don't want us to just box Origi as just an impact up. Yeah, basically. Because do, you, do you think he has the mindset to just be a star player in another team? Do you, do you believe so? Maybe not as big as I don't think he can do his Jekyll anyway. I, I don't, don't think he no, doesn't have anything, it. Anytime he, he doesn't plays, have the skills. Anytime he plays for Liverpool, yeah. if he starts, most of the time he scores. Aside from that United game, which was... Mario and rather, Liverpool was generally poor in that game. Do you understand? Yeah. But like for other games, even against Arsenal and the other games he has played in, he has... Oh, thank you guys. Home. Before we quickly move on to the next segment, he, Damian mentioned something. He said... Three players are key for Liverpool. I just want you guys to tell me if he's right. If you think he's right, just say he's right. If you think there's somebody else that should be inside, you let me know. He called the spine of Liverpool. He said it's Van Dijk, Fabinho, Firmino. Is there any other person? It's absolutely there? correct. It's correct, precious. I concur. I concur, but I feel like... The <laughs> <laughs> I can't concur, but... You, you can't no, I concur. concur. He's, anyway, he's right. Let's, let's take a break from football for now. We don't have our boxing or um, Formula 1 expert. Canelo won a beautiful game earlier to, earlier um, in the weekend. But one man that is around is Ayotunde Onabulu. Last week was on the mountain. Let's see if he's on the volcano today. Ayotunde, how are you doing? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Best of Basketball with me, Ayo, on the Sports Lounge, only on the Let Better TV. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this incredible segment of the show. <laughs> now, the NBA new season is about, what, two weeks old? And... We've seen a lot of things happen. We've seen the Los Angeles Clip, uh, uh, Los Angeles teams, the Clippers and the Lakers, show a lot of gusto, mm. show a lot of class, show a lot of character. We've seen the box being the box. We've seen the Raptors playing some incredible basketball, and um, we have seen the Golden State Warriors absolutely suck. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? It's not common that you get into a segment of the show and you want to talk about the Golden State Warriors and you put them side by side with disappointment. But that has been the unfortunate reality of these guys since moving into their new arena, the Chase Center in San Francisco. Not the kind of welcome you would have thought they would have in that center. We've seen them lose scandalously to the Clippers, to the Suns, at times showing no effort on the floor. And as if it's not bad enough, 
Stephen Curry is out for about three months minimum with a broken hand. Draymond Green is struggling with his hand. Uh, D'Angelo Russell uh, did not play over the weekend. That's on Saturday night against the Charlotte Hornets, a game which they lost. And so we saw what looked like a, a, a G League team out there from the Golden State Warriors. And the question now is, what does the immediate future hold for the Warriors? And um, I'm here to profile a solution. I actually think the Warriors will be better off right now tanking. And just in case you're wondering what tanking means, tanking is not paying attention to winning as you would love to because you don't have the pieces. Most importantly, because you want to set yourself up for a good, good position in the next draft. Uh-huh. Because the current draft system in the NBA encourages poor performance. What do I mean by that? When teams know that they're not going to be in the playoffs and it might be very difficult, they now do not pay attention to winning so that when the draft comes ahead, they can be a lottery team because the worse your record is in the league, the greater your chances to land a top, top pick in the draft. And why is that important to the Warriors, you might be asking me. Now check this out. Stephen Curry is out for a minimum of three months. So if they shut Stephen Curry down or make sure, yeah, because the fans have paid a lot of money to watch Steph play, let's just limit his minutes. We don't need to kill him. He's not going to have a, an MVP um, type season. He might not even make it to the um, NBA All-Star. It doesn't matter. Clay Thompson is not going to be playing uh, anytime soon. Coach Steve Curry even said we may not even see him this season. Draymond Green is struggling. D'Angelo Russell is struggling. Everybody is struggling. So look at this. The Warriors don't make the playoffs. The Warriors land a top 4-5 pick in next draft. And if it's top 20, it's protected because they had a trade, the trade that brought D'Angelo Russell to San Francisco is such that if the draft pick of the Warriors is not within the top 20, it moves in another direction. But if they miss the playoffs, then they get to keep their draft. So look at this. Um, they go high up in the draft. You know what they can do? Next season, Stephen Curry comes back healthy. Klay Thompson is healthy. Draymond Green is healthy. That's the core of the team that won the title in 2015 and set the, uh, the record for most wins in the regular season in 2016, right? So you have all those guys. You can decide, D'Angelo Russell, we don't trade you to get either a good, good player in the shooting guard position who's not comfortable in the small forward position, I beg your pardon, who's not comfortable in his team or wants to win. And what I'm about to tell you is something you should take very seriously. Yanis Andetokounmpo is in a contract situation with the Milwaukee Bucks. And news is that if the Bucks don't win the title or they don't do well this season, Yanis may be considering his future elsewhere. And a lot of sources have mentioned the Golden State Warriors. Imagine Yanis playing with Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green. Ooh, Shando. <laughs> now, there are other players who will be in situations where they don't want to re-sign with their teams and they want to move elsewhere to be able to challenge for a title. Devin Booker is one of those guys. If Clay Thompson, who is six feet seven, moves to the small forward position and Devin Booker joins the Warriors and plays alongside Stephen Curry in the backcourt, that is going to be some fire right there. So look at that. You now have the lottery pick. Plus D'Angelo Russell, because I don't think D'Angelo Russell and Stephen Curry play well together in the backcourt. So use Russell and the top pick as trade baits. A lot of teams will fall for that. And the Warriors might be rebuilding another juggernaut as soon as one year from now. I guess you'd agree with me, therefore, that the Warriors should go ahead and just shut down this season and assure their fans next season we're going to be back. And a, season that, a team that has been a disappointment this season can actually go back to the very top of the food chain as early as the 2020-2021 season. I hope Bob Myers is listening to me right now, the general manager, because he's one of the best in the business. If there's anyone who can pull this move off, I believe it's the man, Bob Myers, in association with the owners of the team, Joe Lacob and Peter Gruber. Watch out. The Warriors will be nothing dead this season, but as early as next season, they do what I just said. They might be challenging for the title 
yet again. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Best of Basketball with me, Ayo, on the Sports Lounge only on Elaborated TV. You got anything to say to what I just said? Uh, it's right there down below. You drop your comment. Make sure you subscribe and like our videos and share. Let the whole world know about this incredible, incredible, incredible show called the Sports Lounge only on Elaborated TV. So y'all come your way next episode. I'm going to hand y'all over back to the guys of the legends in the studio to take this show to another level. And until next time, it's clutch time, baby. Thank you so very much, Ayotin Dion Abolo. It's clutch time. Always clutch time. Always forward with you. And we will be watching Golden State Warriors based on your analysis. So, guys, um, what I'm going to do now is leverage on what Edafe was talking about last week. So, and we're gonna, I think it's gonna, we're going to make it a thing going forward. He spoke about eight cheating in um, Nigerian football. But... Today I'm going to ask you, is there any justifiable reason why Nigerian coaches take bribes? Tayo, what do you think? I mean, there's no justifiable reason. It's, that it's just plainly corrupt, basically. Simply corruption? Yeah. Precious, what's your take on that? I want to tell the same part he, he has um, taken, the same stand. Um, I have experienced this firsthand. I in school back then, University of Benin. Those my guys who are watching <laughs> would they, they remember quite well that I used to do a lot of playing football. And there was this screening. It was organized by Kano. They called it Camp Kano back then. I was in hundred level. Attended the screening. And one of our ex internationals was the one coordinating the screening for my set under fifteen um, then. And during one of the breaks. I decided to go ease myself at the back of the goalpost. And then I saw this guy who was conducting our screening, negotiating for players, the players who are going to come, who are going to be signed from that camp, who were on their way from Lagos. You know what I did? I just went back to the screening venue, packed my boots, and went back to the class. Yeah. There's really no justifiable reason for it. And then you can see it's taking a toll probably in, in some of our age to bridge um, competitions. It, it is, yeah. it is. And I let's end it with you. Um, well, uh, I'm not going to excuse coaches for doing that. But me, I like, I'm a cause and effect person. Uh, if, I, if you put me in a place, uh, there's this thing we say, worry. Because say pussyca, they're very nice. Not me say you give and smoke fish whole. Make it keep for you. A man's temptation, eh? is uh, vastly proportionate to his resistance. So if, for instance, I'm working and I'm earning a consistent salary of 500,000, you most likely will not be able to tempt me with 50,000, 100,000, 150, because I have money. But if you tempt me with a million, two million, 10 million, I will take it. That's, that's natural. Now, if I go to Hotel Dollar and try to bribe Hotel Dollar with 10 million naira, they can resist it because they have the money. But do you think that the vulcanizer on the street, the, the civil servant who is struggling for 30,000 naira monthly salary that has not been approved, do you think they can, they can take that? So let's bring it to Nigerian coaches. From the national team, Nigerian coaches don't get a contract, so they don't have a salary, they don't know when their money is going to come. And then you put them, they are not the proverbial nice cats. Their job is to do well. But then they are there in this position where they just realize that, oh, I'm not being paid, oh, but I have the magical power. I have the, the, the genie, of, I have the lamb, the genie and everything under my control. Agents will start coming. Parents will start coming and start telling them that, look, take my boy. This boy already have invitation from West Ham, from Arsenal, from this or that. They will tell you those lies. And what they just need is maybe two or three matches for the national team. But if you can do that, I'll give you 20 million, I'll give you 10 million. See, you can resist a 100,000 dollar temptation. But when you do that, when it is 10, when the money is big, you would drop the best player who does not have anybody like uh, they drop like this guy pick his his boots. Some would drop you, you you head. That's why you moved. If you did not hear, they would make yeah. sure you run around the field five hundred laps. Why other people who are not even in the screening would make the squad? It is because the coaches don't get paid as I went due. You can't owe a man seven months salary and you say you should resist the temptation of five million, two million, three million. It's not possible. So I think if the Coaches, the administrators, the NFF, the club administrators realize that this is big business and they put their act together and make sure they get the money that is needed. Access Bank, for instance, do a marathon. Yeah. Do you think Access Bank have not calculated the cost before they decide to do that marathon? And the Lagos Marathon, as soon as you win, your money, $50,000, $100,000, comes straight, which means Access Bank have put their act together. 
Let the clubs in Nigeria and the NFF put their act together. Know that if I employ 10 coaches, you have the salary to pay for the next two years. Then we can discipline coaches. How come it is that even Salisu Mohammed, Salisu Yusuf, sorry, was caught in the act yeah. and the NFF suspended him and put a caveat that he can return. It was public pressure that made them not to, you know, bring him back. So the thing is, the NFF know that they are also guilty. The clubs know that they are guilty. That's why even if you complain that the coaches collect money from you, they can't complain. Are you paying my salary? How do you want me to feed? Sure. All of a sudden, you... Yeah, you know the way Nigeria is. You become used to it. A club employs you. Your friends and your family start putting demand. You know this thing we say? We go wash them all. We go yeah, wash them yeah. all. What you go take wash them? <laughs> Where the money will take by the soap to take wash them? So it is from that bribery and all that collecting of funds. I'm not saying it's good, but I'm telling you what causes it. Because I'm not one of those person who just come out here and complain. Oh, it's bad, it's bad. What causes it? If we fix what causes it and they are still doing it, then we can sanction them. But right now, we can't, we've not fixed it. Let's fix what causes it and then we can fix it. Yeah, I mean, isn't it nice that we know how much Ole Gunnar Sosha and Una Emery and the rest of them, all these people at Young Club ends, we know how big their salaries is, what they take every week, every bonuses and the rest. Can we say that of the coaches? The Nigerian League now have started. Can we say that of the coaches? Referees from last season, next week we'll talk about referees. Referees from last season have not been paid. Some players from last season have not been paid. Coaches from last season have not been paid. And you say they shouldn't take bribe. Oh, but they want to take bribe there. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the hope of um, Nigerian football, we hope this can be curbed so that we can see the real, true quality players come out and play for their... Well, as we always say, time flies. Really, really flies when you're having fun. But before we leave, I would like to say thank you very much, I guess, Edafe. It's always nice having you. You're the best to ever do this. Uh, Precious, the number man. Thank you so much. Tayo, uh, yeah, you should be expecting Tayo's IV for uh, married next year. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> we'll be there. Well, we'll before... do one of the sports lines oh, at the reception. <laughs> Before I leave, I would like to leave you guys with a prayer my grandma used to pray for us when we were growing up. She, I didn't understand the prayer at first. She says, me, she, 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 she's talking for pigeons. She say, you know, go work out the day road bad. I come down, I used to say, what does this mean? Does it mean that I should take only Todd Milan Bridge? I should not take Echo Bridge? <laughs> or looking at where United have come for since Ferguson. It was then I understood what what <laughs> bad was made. So let's let's you call now. your mother to pray for <laughs> to pray for my United. You don't go back out the day road bad. Please subscribe, comment. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.